All right, I have a Wraith Prism RGB cooler cooling down my Ryzen 5 1600. I have that overclocked to 4000 megahertz at 1.35 volts. I wanna run a Cinebench test. I wanna max out the temp of this. I wanna see what the max temperature is gonna be. And then we'll install the Hyper 212 Black Edition, run it again and see what kind of temperature difference we get. Let's get to it. I will leave time codes in the description so you can skip to the end if you wanna see the reveal. Okay, I believe after five minutes, we will be at our max temp. Let's see what it is. All right, the test is still going. We've just passed the five minute mark and it looks like our max temp's gonna be about 82 degrees Celsius. Let's go ahead and install the Hyper 212 Black Edition and let's see if it makes any difference. And as a reminder, I'm gonna put time codes in the description in case you wanna skip around. Let's install the Hyper 212. All right, we are doing an AM4 installation. Anything with the AM4 chipset, specifically I'm doing mine on a B450 Micro ATX. We'll need to grab the plastic back plate from the box. And just to get our orientation, we wanna have the Intel lettering facing towards us. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna have these four pins close by. And we will also wanna have these four plastic clips close by, so grab those from your box. So for starters, we wanna be focused on these four legs. One, two, three, and four. So let's go ahead and grab the first pin and we wanna slot it right through there. And if you kinda of turn it over, you wanna have it slot in just like that. So let's flip that back over. So now that we have the first pin where it should be, we want to grab our plastic clip. And the plastic clip can only go in one way. And we want to slide it on just like that. Now for starters, we don't want to worry about what slot this goes into. We'll get to that later. So we just need to go ahead and put all four pins in along with all four clips. Now that we've installed all four pins and all four clips, we wanna make sure these pins are slotted correctly. So all you have to do is we wanna take this side, for example, we want the pins farthest away from each other. So this is all the way over. This one is not, so I'm gonna click it over there. Now those two are farthest away from each other. I'm gonna to go to this side right here. You can see this pin is slotted far away. This one's not, so I'm gonna go ahead and just push it over there. So now the pins are slotted away from each other as far as they can and this should fit the back of our motherboard. Now that the back plate is prepped, let's move on to the heat sink and prep that. All right, go ahead and locate these two brackets. And you'll also wanna find these two little screws. And of course, we're gonna need the heat sink. All right, well, we see that notch in the first bracket right here. So with the heat sink standing up just like that, we're just gonna put the bracket right on top just like that. And then with your screwdriver, we're going to attach the first bracket. Do the exact same thing on the other side. And just like that, the heat sink is prepped. Alrighty, I've taken off my stock AMD cooler. And just remember that when you do do that, the back plate will fall off. So I suggest that you lay your tower on a table. And if you're building a brand new system, make sure you take off those clips shown right here. But make sure to save those two plastic clips and those four screws because you may need them in the future in case you decide to change coolers. All right, now it's time to grab the back plate that we prepped at the beginning of the video. So now I'm going to take that back plate. I'm going to go underneath the tower, underneath the motherboard. And just like at the beginning of the video, the pins are aligned properly and they fit right through those four holes. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these four standoffs. And with the first standoff, I'm just going to go ahead and screw in one corner. I'm going to do it nice and snug. I'm going to crisscross. Now I'm going to go to the top corner. And I'm gonna do this for the remaining two corners. Next, we wanna grab this socket. 
because now we're going to tighten these standoffs just a little bit more. So just place it over the standoff like that and tighten it up nice and snug. You don't want to kill the motherboard. And as you're doing this, you want to crisscross. So I'm going to go to the upper left hand corner and do the same thing. Nice and snug, but not too tight. And I'm going to do it for the remaining two. And what's cool with the Hyper 212 that I just got at Best Buy today is that it comes with its own thermal paste. All right, let's go ahead and put some thermal paste on here. I'm going to try and put that standard pea size drop. All right, now it is time to actually grab the heat sink. But first, if you bought this brand new, remember to take off the warning sign on the bottom of the heat sink. You do not want to put that on. If this is the first time you've ever done this, this may be the most frustrating part of the process. So what we want to do is line up our four screws to mate into the four standoffs. So just gently go down. and get as close as you can, just like that. Grab your trusty screwdriver, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but you wanna press down firmly and start screwing on the first screw. You wanna give it pretty much sturdy force just to get that first thread in. Once you know you can feel it, you wanna do about two or three turns. You wanna keep steady pressure on top of the heat sink and then I'm going to go to the opposite corner. You won't be able to see it on camera, but I'm going to do this and get this thread in two to three turns once I feel it. And then I'm just going to rotate the corners just like this. So let me finish that up. And again, just do it nice and slow. Don't worry about over tightening the screws. They will bottom out. That took me approximately two minutes to secure the heat sink to the motherboard. Let's continue. All right, now it's time to install the fans. Last year when I installed the Hyper 212, I remember my fans, they came with these plastic clips like the ones you see here. But it looks like in order to save a dollar or two, they did away with the plastic clips and they gave us these wire clips right here. And I already know it's gonna be a pain in the ass to put these on, but we're going to get through it, even if I have to do some fancy video editing. So let's just go. All right, let's go ahead and put the first fan on. But before we do that, you want to make sure that the fan is orientated correctly. You see the wire that's going to go to the CPU fan splitter towards the back. So you want to make sure that that is actually going towards the back and not towards the front like this, because it'll just be crazy cable management. So remember to do that. I'm going to put mine all the way down there so it's hidden really well. Next, let's try and tackle this wire clip. There it is right there. And it's going to go on the inside of these holes right there. Let's see if I can figure this out. I'm going to do one. Make sure that's clipped. And it looks like I'm going to kind of just hold it there while I get the other one. All right, it appears that I got it. There, I can feel it go right into the slits on the heat sink. All right, the Hyper 212 is installed. Same thing, overclock to four gigahertz at 1.35 volts. Let's hit Cinebench 23 and see where we stand. Here we are before the test, idling at about 26 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius. Let's go. And again, we'll come back at the five minute mark. That should be enough to find out the max temp. All right, we just passed the five minute mark and we've only gotten up to 72 degrees, currently at 70 degrees. I don't think it's gonna get any hotter than that. So with the stock cooler, we're at 82, 83, down to 72 degrees, a whole 10 degrees difference. Thanks for watching, folks.